Book One, Chapters Twenty through Twenty Two of the Antiquities of the Jews, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume One by Flavius Josephus, translated by William Whiston. Book One, Chapters Twenty through Twenty Two. Chapter Twenty Concerning the Meeting of Jacob and Esau. Now, as Jacob was proceeding on his journey to the land of Canaan, angels appeared to him and suggested to him good hope of his future condition, and that place he named the Camp of God. And being desirous of knowing what his brother's intentions were to him, he sent messengers to give him an exact account of everything, as being afraid on account of the enmities between them. He charged those that were sent to say to Esau, Jacob had thought it wrong to live together with him while he was in anger against him, and so had gone out of the country, and that he now, thinking the length of time of his absence must have made up their differences, was returning, that he brought with him his wives and his children, and what possessions he had gotten, and delivered himself, with what was most dear to him, into his hands and should think it his greatest happiness to partake together with his brother of what God had bestowed upon him. So these messengers told him this message, upon which Esau was very glad, and met his brother with four hundred men. And Jacob, when he heard that he was coming to meet him with such a number of men, was greatly afraid. However, he committed his hope of deliverance to God, and considered how, in his present circumstances, he might preserve himself and those that were with him, and overcome his enemies if they attacked him injuriously. He therefore distributed his company into parts, some he sent before the rest, and the others he ordered to come close behind, that so, if the first were overpowered when his brother attacked them, they might have those that followed as a refuge to fly unto. And when he had put his company into this order, he sent some of them to carry presents to his brother. The presents were made up of cattle, and a great number of four-footed beasts of many kinds, such as would be very acceptable to those that received them, on account of their rarity. Those who were sent went at certain intervals of space asunder, that, by following thick one after another, they might appear to be more numerous, that Esau might remit of his anger, on account of these presents, if he were still in a passion. Instructions were also given to those that were sent to speak gently to him. When Jacob had made these appointments all the day, and night came on, he moved on with his company, and as they were gone over a certain river called Jabbok, Jacob was left behind, and, meeting with an angel, he wrestled with him, the angel beginning the struggle. But he prevailed over the angel, who used a voice, and spake to him in words, exhorting him to be pleased with what had happened to him, and not to suppose that his victory was a small one, but that he had overcome a divine angel, and to esteem the victory as a sign of great blessings that should come to him, and that his offspring should never fall, and that no man should be too hard for his power. He also commanded him to be called Israel, which in the Hebrew tongue signifies one that struggled with the divine angel. These promises were made at the prayer of Jacob, for when he perceived him to be the angel of God, he desired he would signify to him what should befall him hereafter. And when the angel had said what is before related, he disappeared. But Jacob was pleased with these things, and named the place Phanuel, which signifies the face of God. Now when he felt pain by this struggling, upon his broad sinew, he abstained from eating that sinew himself afterward, and for his sake it is still not eaten by us. When Jacob understood that his brother was near, he ordered his wives to go before, each by herself, with the handmaids, that they might see the actions of the men as they were fighting, if Esau were so disposed. He then went up to his brother Esau, and bowed down to him, who had no evil design upon him, but saluted him and asked him about the company of the children and of the women, and desired, when he had understood all he wanted to know about them, that he would go along with them to their father. But Jacob pretending that the cattle were weary, Esau returned to Seir, 
for there was his place of habitation, he having named the place Roughness, from his own hairy roughness. Chapter 21 Concerning the Violation of Dinah's Chastity Hereupon Jacob came to the place, till this day called Tents, Succoth, from whence he went to Shechem, which is a city of the Canaanites. Now as the Shechemites were keeping a festival, Dinah, who was the only daughter of Jacob, went into the city to see the finery of the women of that country. But when Shechem, the son of Hamor the king, saw her, he defiled her by violence, and being greatly in love with her, desired his father that he should procure the damsel to him for a wife. To which desire he condescended, and came to Jacob, desiring him to give leave that his son Shechem might, according to law, marry Dinah. But Jacob, not knowing how to deny the desire of one of such great dignity, and yet not thinking it lawful to marry his daughter to a stranger, entreated him to give him leave to have a consultation about what he desired him to do. So the king went away, in hopes that Jacob would grant him this marriage. But Jacob informed his sons of the defilement of their sister, and of the address of Hamor, and desired them to give their advice what they should do. Upon this the greatest part said nothing, not knowing what advice to give. But Simeon and Levi, the brethren of the damsel by the same mother, agreed between themselves upon the action following. It being now the time of a festival, when the Shechemites were employed in ease and feasting, they fell upon the watch when they were asleep, and, coming into the city, slew all the males as also the king and his son with them, but spared the women. And when they had done this without their father's consent, they brought away their sister. Now while Jacob was astonished at the greatness of this act, and was severely blaming his sons for it, God stood by him and bid him be of good courage, but to purify his tents, and to offer those sacrifices which he vowed to offer when he went first into Mesopotamia and saw his vision. As he was therefore purifying his followers, he lighted upon the gods of Laban, for he did not before know they were stolen by Rachel and he hid them in the earth under an oak in Shechem. And departing thence, he offered sacrifice at Bethel, the place where he saw his dream when he went first into Mesopotamia. And when he was gone thence, and was come over against Ephrata, he there buried Rachel, who died in childbed. She was the only one of Jacob's kindred that had not the honor of burial at Hebron. And when he had mourned for her a great while, he called the son that was born of her Benjamin, because of the sorrow the mother had with him. These are all the children of Jacob, twelve males and one female. Of them eight were legitimate, that is, six of Leah and two of Rachel, and four were of the handmaids, two of each, all whose names have been set down already. Chapter 22 How Isaac Died and Was Buried in Hebron from thence Jacob came to Hebron, a city situate among the Canaanites, and there it was that Isaac lived. And so they lived together for a little while, for as to Rebekah, Jacob did not find her alive. Isaac also died not long after the coming of his son, and was buried by his sons with his wife in Hebron, where they had a monument belonging to them from their forefathers. Now Isaac was a man who was beloved of God, and was vouchsafed great instances of providence by God, after Abraham his father, and lived to be exceeding old. For when he had lived virtuously one hundred and eighty-five years, he then died. End of Book 1, Chapters 20-22 through 22. End of Book 1